There's always some transphobia to react to. Are you ready? Hey Spuds, how's it going? It's Jamie, welcome back to another video. Your first video on the channel, I don't know, but welcome back or welcome here. Thank you for being here, I hope you're well. Today is an unplanned video, but this one has been very requested. I kept noticing I was getting messages and being tagged to react to and about this same trailer for a documentary film thing that is looking suspiciously transphobic. And a lot of you have been like, hey, Jamie, maybe you could react to this. So, hey, I'm here to react to it. It's called What is a Woman? From the Daily Wire, which I think I've heard of, made by somebody or involving heavily somebody called Matt Walsh. What is a woman? Immediately, is he wearing a sandwich board that says, what is a woman? Okay. <laughs> Can you tell me that? <laughs> well, you're at the Women's March, you must have some idea. Please, if, if one person could tell me what a woman is. You are not here for women! We ask you to leave! What is that? What is that? Oh, wow. So, a dude going to a woman's march and going up to women and asking them to define what a woman is. And probably acting like it's some big gotcha moment. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, let's not forget the sandwich board. I mean, what definition was he looking for? One based off of genitals and reproductive organs? That's a little bit very narrow and not exactly great to boil people down to their parts. What is a woman? Oh, from the controversial mind of Matt Walsh. I'm a husband. I'm a father of four. I host a talk show. I give speeches. I write books. I like to make sense of things. A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. Mm -hmm. I like scented candles. And I've watched Sex and the City. Yeah. How do I know if, if I'm a woman? Oh dear God, what is he doing? Why is he making this? To so just show a compilation of people saying it can't be boiled down to one thing. Some women do have penises, like trans women. Some men do have vaginas, like some trans men. And your response is, I like scented candles. Is that what makes a woman? <laughs> no. That's a great question. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. No. How do you know that you're a man? I guess because I got a dick. <laughs> a journey to discover the truth. The truth about what? Can a man become a woman? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a woman, so I, I can't really answer that. Women only know what women are. Can a man become a woman? That's a silly question, because trans women are not men who become women. They are women who happen to be trans. Just like trans men are not women who become men. We're men who happen to be trans. At least ask the right questions. Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? You want to tell us what a woman is? Ah, uh, yes. I mean, I don't know if this is lovely editing or if this is actually how it went down, but ask somebody to define an animal. Yeah, that really makes sense. Asking someone to define an animal that has nothing to do with the human concept and language of gender and sex is really not the clever move he thinks it is. I could bring up the example when a well-known transphobe tried to define a chair and then multiple people pointed out to him that that definition could also work for horses. So well done, a horse is now a chair apparently. <laughs> From the director of No Safe Spaces. Oh, so this is not his first time. Okay. I'm a biological woman that medically transitioned to appear like a male. I will never be a man. Oh. N mm, no, Abs no, do not agree with that. 99.99999999% of trans men will very strongly disagree with that statement. I don't know if that person actually identifies as a trans man. By the sounds of it, they were assigned female at birth and transitioned in the sense of taking testosterone and living within society as a man. But yes, sure, for the purposes of your seemingly transphobic documentary, go and find one of the very, very few trans people who holds these kind of gender critical, transphobic -y views on trans people and include them. Ignore the many thousands and the vast, vast majority of trans people who will very strongly disagree with this very, very small number of trans people who will say things like this. I did also do a quick Google search of Scott Nugent <laughs> and a direct quote from them, because I'm not sure what Scott's pronouns are, I couldn't find them online and I do not want to 
misgender anybody, but a direct quote from Scott is, I just happened to get deathly ill from my transition, and it forced me to see what was happening. Reading a little bit more, it sounds like they had some very intense complications from surgery, and this has potentially led to some negative feelings over transitioning, I feel. This is, I'm not saying any of this for definite, this is just the kind of vibe I'm getting. They also seem to be really, really against kids having access to trans healthcare, are hyper-focused on the small number of people who regret transitioning, and seem to support JK Rowling's views. So they definitely do not speak for the trans community. Scott also appears to run an organisation that seems to promote being against kids transitioning, basically. Despite the fact that 90% of transitioning in childhood is social, and the other 10% is a little sprinkling of puberty blockers for a very small number of those trans kids, puberty blockers being something that is completely reversible. And so they go on the internet and they're told that all their problems will be solved if they become a man. No, they're not. <laughs> um, I think it's very clear that transitioning is not just a whimsical and easy thing to do. So you worry that there, there could be a sort of social contagion element of this? A teeny tiny bit, maybe. Here comes the damage caused by rapid onset gender dysphoria. A theory that actually has no solid evidence, and a piece of research that's also just been rejected by the trans community, scientific community, and the medical community. It got me at 42. Your child doesn't have a chance. It got me at 42. Your child doesn't have a chance. This might have been out of context, I don't know, but that really, really does not come across well at all. It got me at for what got you at 42? What? I'm not gonna say for sure or make any solid assumptions. I'm just gonna say how it comes across to me personally is that this person, Scott, maybe has some regrets over their own transition and is now seemingly projecting that onto other people. Kinda reminds me of the case of Kira Bell in the UK. Someone who made a mistake shouldn't have transitioned and now has actively tried to reduce access to healthcare, particularly for trans kids. Transitioning saves lives, fact. Transitioning improves well-being, fact. Detransitioning is highly unlikely. Fact. Just because it was the wrong thing for you, just because it's the wrong thing for a very, very small number of people, does not mean it's the wrong thing for everybody else. And all the thousands of people where transitioning greatly improves their lives, if we had such a strong pushback against every medical treatment and procedure that has a regret rate at all, then nobody would ever get anything done, or nobody would ever want anybody else to get anything done. You don't see this happening with other things, it's just because transphobia exists. You're affirming it with hormones that have never been used in this way. What hormones? Never been used in what way? Hormones have been used to treat various different things for a long time, and hormones have been used in the treatment of trans people for a very long time, as in decades. Puberty blockers, which are completely reversible. Completely reversible. One of the drugs used is Lupron, right? Which mm -hmm. has actually been used to chemically castrate sex offenders. You know what? I'm not sure that we should continue with this interview. So you don't want to talk about the drugs that you give to kids, or...? I'm taking a guess that that person just didn't want to put up with the bullshit questions anymore. Puberty blockers have actually been used in cis kids with precocious puberty for a very long time. Decades as well, decades. Precocious puberty being when puberty starts too early, so they use puberty blockers to hold it off a bit till the child is a more appropriate age. There has never been a fuss over cis kids with early puberty having access to puberty blockers in the same way that there has been a fuss over trans kids. They're the same drugs, they're used in the same way, to hold off puberty until a child is ready to go through puberty. No one ever gave a shit about puberty blockers until it became widely known that they were used to help trans kids. How can they be removing the healthy breasts of 15 year old girls? Sorry to pause it again so quickly. Nice bit of misgendering there and just very uncomfortable language. What I'm also trying to do is where they've clearly used footage and images of trans people. Now, I'm gonna hazard a guess those trans people wouldn't have wanted to be included in this. I'm not going to include them myself here. I'm gonna include the sound that was over it. Anyway, I've never really heard of anybody having any kind of trans-related surgery before the age of 18. And in the UK, at least, trans surgeries are only offered in adulthood. If you're under 18 in a different country, it may be possible, if you're 16 or 17, to have top surgery with parental consent and a lot of talking to professionals. But again, you don't see anybody getting irate and upset and campaigning against the fact that cis teenagers who are under 18 are having plastic surgery, 
with parental consent, such as rhinoplasty, gynecomastia, which is top surgery, and other types of surgery as well. I'm not commenting on that at all, or calling for that to be stopped, or saying that's problematic. I'm just saying, why is it that it's only when it comes to trans kids that people suddenly have this issue? There's a clear pattern that medical practices that are seen as okay in cis people and cis kids, suddenly when they are done for trans kids and trans people, they are no longer okay. They're masculine girls. They're feminine boys. What are we gonna do about that? Carve them up? Ew, 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 ew. I cannot say ew enough at that statement. Oh my gosh. And yes, there are feminine boys and masculine girls, including feminine trans boys and masculine trans girls. Because funnily enough, your gender isn't dictated by how masculine or feminine you are. And yes, a lot of trans people were non-conforming for their assigned sex growing up and into adulthood, but not all, and it's not a necessity. How can this whole thing be happening, Matt? I wanted us to have a safe place to be able to talk about this. Part of me wants to ask why you care so much. I care about the truth. I care about children. I care about the women who are having their opportunities stolen from them. Oh. It doesn't feel like caring. That really doesn't feel like there's any care for the trans people involved who are real people and who deserve rights and deserve access to trans healthcare. It feels more like you've bought into lies about the trans community. Is it transphobic to tell the truth? The interview's over. Let's turn off the cameras. Excuse me. They're fair. I just wanted to know what is a woman. And you're not going to find out. Based on what I'm saying, would you ever want to move to America? <laughs> they say no. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Honestly, that felt like a hot mess and was just filled with all of the transphobic dog whistles and transphobia that was thinly veiled as caring about children. Truth is, these people, the people with these views and the transphobic views and making films like this, will not have had any concern for the cis kids receiving the exact same treatment, and I'm not saying they should have. What I'm pointing out is that they all of a sudden have concern and are pouring money and resources into making stuff like this to just shit on an incredibly discriminated against community within society. Why? I, it doesn't make sense to me. There's just a lot of fear-mongering going around, there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of half-truths, there's a lot of dog whistles, and there's a lot of people buying into it. When in reality, trans people, we just want to live our lives, okay? Trans kids deserve access to trans-affirming healthcare, which again, just reminding you, a majority of which is purely just social. And then the other little bit is puberty blockers. Anyway, that's been my reaction to this. Let me know what you think of it. And think about giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to, but no pressure. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.